Welcome to Lecture 8 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we'll commence our overview of several types of digital modulation schemes, in this case, pulse amplitude modulation, or PAM, and phase shift keying, or PSK. So, modulation is a process by which we map B bits into some sort of symbolic representation or waveform. As we've seen before, um, ultimately these waveforms are nothing more than um, sines and cosines that could potentially be added together that possess different amplitudes, phases, and frequencies. What we're trying to ultimately do in digital communications is that these patterns of B bits um, actually contain some sort of message. And uh, these B bits can be represented as a vector of these B binary digits. And we're trying to communicate that from the transmitter to the receiver using this sim symbolic notation. So for every message, MB, and there can be up to 2 to the B possible MB messages, we need to have a unique waveform or signal representation, which we will refer to as SI of T, where I is the signal index, and there are 2 to the B possible signals that can be represented. And I'm going to illustrate that right now. Okay, so let's refer back to our transmitter model. So we have our binary source, we have our source encoding, we have our channel encoding, and now what happens is this is the block that we're going to be looking at at this lecture and several others after it, which is called the modulator. I'll spell it out. And what it does is it maps binary patterns to two to the B possible waveforms. So this is binary, this is binary, this is binary, and out here, this gives us our symbols, okay? That then ultimately go to the digital analog converter and, and, and then ultimately over the air. And so what happens is, um, in essence, when we deal with modulation, we kind of lump this in together into some, we, and we just call it, you know, sort of the, uh, the uh, binary sequence generator, right? So this is where our binary sequence comes in. And then what we care about is we take those ones and zeros, okay? And what we want to do is we want to convert them into some sort of time domain waveforms. And the first one we're going to look at is um, pulse amplitude modulation, and specifically um, binary pulse amplitude mod modulation. But in essence, what we want to do is we want to take, the, uh, like, you know, groups of B bits, in this case, B is equal to four, and then map them to some sort of waveform over every T seconds. And depending on what the property of that, let, let's say this symbol, this is SI of T. And then let's say the next one, in this case, looks like amplitude is the factor for determining the difference between the different unique waveforms. This one is SJ of T and so on. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to do the mapping of these binary patterns to these symbol waveforms. So the first type of modulation scheme that we'll be looking at is something called binary pulse amplitude modulation, or BPAM, where um, one and zero are mapped directly to a unique symbol that represents them, uh, either S1 of T for the case of one, and S2 of T in case of zero. So we call uh, this sort of mapping a modulation rule, and we like to represent these sometimes in terms of a mathematical uh, expression, like we have here in equation one, where S of T is equal to some sort of amplitude, and that amplitude will depend whether it's a one or a zero that's being transmitted, um, multiplied by, in this case, a rectangular wave that is 
um, two unit step functions, one subtracted from each other in order to create that. So um, several things to remember, and we're, we're going to be referring to extensively throughout the rest of this course, is this idea called the bit rate. How many bits are being transmitted per unit time? And so uh, the bit rate is equal to one over the bit period, or the duration of a single bit, which we refer to as capital T. Um, another uh, uh, item that we probably would want to pay attention to, especially for the rest of this course, is something called the symbol energy, which we refer to as ES. And the symbol energy is equal to the square of the signal waveform that represents um, some pattern of, uh, of bits and um, integrated from minus infinity to infinity. And the units for this is joules. Since we're dealing with um, potentially um, uh, different representations, different symbol representations for um, uh, various binary patterns, um, what ends up happening is, first of all, we're going to need to take the average of the symbol energies. And then next, although symbol energy is great, um, the fundamental unit of information in digital communications is the bit. So we always want to know how much energy is being expended per bit rather than per symbol. That way we can also have um, a means of fair comparison with other modulation schemes if we refer to the energy being expended or being used on a bit level rather than a symbol level because some symbols might have a different number of bits representing them. So uh, in the case of BPAM, we want to uh, find what the average uh, symbol energy is, which in this case, because uh, one bit represents one symbol, is equal to the, the bit energy. So the energy per bit, or the average energy per bit, is equal to, in equation two, uh, the probability that we transmit a one times the energy of the symbol that represents that one, plus the probability that we transmit a zero times the energy of the symbol that represents the zero. Um, in a lot of cases, we usually assume that the, uh, trans the probability of transmitting one or zero is Equiprobable, so that's usually 0.5 and 0.5 respectively. Okay, so um, assuming that, and also assuming that um, uh, the, the waveforms that represent one and zero are identical, but have uh, one has a positive amplitude and one has a negative amplitude, um, we can make the assumptions um, such that the average bit energy is actually equal to something called a squared t, as shown in equation three. Then, once we have the uh, average bit energy, we then want to compute another type of distance, not a Hamming distance like what we saw before, but something called the Euclidean distance. And Euclidean distance is a, a means of, of representing a metric how close one waveform that represents one binary pattern is to another waveform that represents another binary pattern. And in this case, the Euclidean distance, again, we use the uh, symbol d to represent distance, d i j squared, so that's the Euclidean distance between uh, waveforms i and waveforms j, is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of s i of t minus s j of t, the, the, that difference squared d t, and that gives us uh, the Euclidean distance. And so physically, what does this mean? Well, essentially what we're doing is we're taking these two temporal waveforms we're subtracting each other. So what we're left with is the sort of temporal difference of these two waveforms. And then we take the square of it and integrate from minus infinity to infinity. What we're essentially doing is finding the energy of the difference of these signals. Okay. And ultimately what we want is that for a modulation scheme, we desire having the Euclidean distance to be a minimum. Um, or uh, 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 sorry, not to be a minimum, to have the minimum Euclidean distance be as far enough apart as possible. Because what I mean to say is when you have two waveforms that are awfully close to each other, their Euclidean different, uh, distance will be relatively small. And this means that the receiver will have a much more difficult time trying to determine which waveform has been intercepted. On the other hand, if the Euclidean distance is very large, which means that the two waveforms are very distinct from each other, 
this is great because then we can much uh, in a, in a much, uh, we could we can better distinguish distinguish at the receiver what symbol we're receiving. Okay. Now, um, now that we know the uh, how to calculate the average uh, bit energy and the uh, minimum Euclidean distance, we now have something called power efficiency that we can calculate, and this is. Uh, very important because what the power efficiency or epsilon p what it does what it represents is it tells us how much uh, how how efficient our modulation scheme is in terms of the amount of energy expended and uh, uh, given the different waveforms that represent the binary patterns that we're trying to communicate over, uh, across the medium. So uh, we represent the power efficiency by the equation in the number six here as epsilon p is equal to the minimum Euclidean distance divided by the average bit energy. So, uh, for instance, like let's suppose we have um, uh, the following uh, BPAM representation. Uh, so S1 is equal to A uh, UT minus UT minus T, and S2 is equal to minus A UT minus UT minus T. And so what we have here are essentially antipodal signals. We have the signals that are totally opposite to each other. So if we compute the minimum Euclidean distance, it should give us 4a squared t. And if we compute the average bit energy, this should give us a squared t. And so therefore, the power efficiency for binary PAM is 4, given the expression in 6. So uh, where do we get these uh, numbers from? So um, let's actually uh, work this out by hand. So when computing the power efficiency, epsilon p is equal to d min squared over eb bar. Uh, what we need to do is we need to break this down into several steps. Okay, so step one, uh, let's calculate d min squared. So we know that d min squared is equal to the integral from zero to t, so the symbol period, of s2 of t, let's say this is a binary representation, minus s1 of t, squared dt. So in this case, uh, what, sort of, um, what, sort of, what sort of waveforms do we have? Well, in essence, what we have is we have a, a rectangular waveforms. So, in, so really, it's, it's their unity across 0 to t anyway, right? Except that their amplitudes are different. So we have 0 to t. So what's the value of S2? The value of S2 is minus A. And what is the value of S1? It's plus A, so minus A there, squared dt. And then what happens is we now integrate from 0 to t for A squared dt. Where did I get that from? So this is minus 2a squared for a squared, uh, and then dt. We integrate according to t. There's no t here, so 4a squared t now materializes. Step two, we now want to compute what the average bit energy is. So what is the individual symbol energy? What's es1? Well, we integrate from 0 to t, s1 of t squared, dt. And again, because it's a rectangular wave, right? Because essentially um, um, s1 of t, it's always nice to draw these things. s1 of t essentially is that from 0 to t. And s2 of t is this from 0 to t. It's minus a. And so what we have is 0 to t a squared dt. And that gives us a squared t. It turns out that this is also equal because what's minus a squared is a squared is equal to es2. So the average, so step three is now compute the average symbol energy. So the bar represents the average. So um, what is the, the probability, um, uh, the probability that we transmit um, s1 or whatever. So so let's first, uh, actually, let's just go straight to computing the probability bit error. So, EB bar, so bar represents the average, is equal to the probability that we transmit a 1 times the energy 
that's expended uh, to transmit a one, right? And and it turns out that that's equal to E S one plus P zero, and then that's uh, E E B two, and that is E S two, and it turns out if this is equiprobable, that means it's fifty fifty. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We know that these guys are equal. So in the end of the day, this is equal to a t squared. The last step, four, is to apply the expression for the power efficiency. And what we see is we have four a t squared over a t squared. Those cancel and we're left with four. The next modulation scheme we're going to look at right now is binary phase shift keying, or BPSK. This is an extremely popular choice of modulation scheme used in a large number of digital communication systems. As before, we, the first thing we do is we define a modulation rule. So in this case, a 1 is mapped to S1 and a 0 is mapped to S2. And as you can see, um, whereas before our uh, modulation rule, the uh, uh, BPAM signal was a rectangular wave and either if it had a positive amplitude, it was a one. If it was a negative amplitude, it was a zero. Here, it's a little different because now what we have is uh, we have a cosine with an amplitude with a specific phase theta uh, and, th and that represents one. And the negative amplitude version of that represents the zero. And it's kind of interesting to note that What's another way of representing S2? Um, essentially, it's like it's equivalent to a positive amplitude, and the cosine has uh, a pi degrees phase shift associated with it, and that is also equal to minus S1 of t. So it's interesting. So this is critical because whereas BPAM, uh, all the information was contained within the amplitude values. Uh, of of the of the signal of the waveform within uh, the time period t. In the case of BPSK, the information is contained within the phase, not in the amplitude, although it might look like it at first, it's really all contained within the phase. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually show now um, how uh, uh, BPSK um, also has a power efficiency that is equal to four. So first, um, just as before, we calculate the minimum Euclidean distance. So we take the two waveforms, we subtract them, and we take the, the, the square of their difference and then integrate. Um, in this case, what we do is we integrate from zero to t. We integrate over the period of that waveform rather than from minus infinity to infinity. And that gives us a minimum Euclidean distance. Now, um, we, we, if we use some trig identities and such, what ends up happening is we get the following outcome. We get some DC term, 4a squared, uh, sorry, 4a squared t divided by 2 plus 4a squared over 2 integral from 0 to t cosine 2 omega ct plus 2 theta d, dt. Now it's interesting to note that that integral term actually disappears because what happens is through the trigonometric identity that we use in order to get from the second to the third line in this derivation, what we've just done is we've gone from omega ct for the cosine to 2 omega ct. We call this a double frequency term. And what happens is we can make an approximation here that because a, a cosine is symmetric, it has the same numbers of ups and downs, if we double the frequency of this signal, um, the probability that if we integrate from 0 to t across the entire period, that all the ups cancel out all the downs is very high. And so we can uh, very safely uh, 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 ignore that second term and what we're left with is 2a squared t. Now let's compute the average bit energy. And the average bit energy, again, we take the, we find out the energy of this uh, waveform S1 of t and the energy of S2 of t. And what we find is, again, through the same trick with the double frequency term eliminated, we get a squared t over 2. So, and since we're assuming that the ones and zeros are equally likely to occur, the average bit energy, which is equal to the average symbol energy, because uh, we it's a binary modulation scheme, so the number, uh, one bit is represented by one symbol, uh, 
um, the average bit energy is equal to P0 times ES2 plus P1 times ES1, which is equal to A squared T over 2. So now applying the power efficiency equation, we get 4. It turns out that for a modulation scheme that uses all its signal constellation points, all available signal constellation points in its modulation, um, a power efficiency of 4 is the best possible answer that you can get. Uh, all other modulation schemes, uh, other than a couple of others that we're going to be looking at very, uh, very soon, um, possess a power efficiency that is less than 4. Before we conclude this lecture, uh, it's worth actually going through um, uh, an alternative approach to computing the minimum Euclidean distance. Just like before, when we talked about Hamming distance and we have a graphical representation, um, there's also a graphical representation that we can have over here with respect to computing the, 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 the minimum Euclidean distance and the, um, the symbol energy. And uh, essentially what we, what we have is the following. So we look at d min and we have this expression, the difference of the two waveforms squared integrated from 0 to t. And that's actually, if you expand this out, it turns out that this d min is actually equal to the symbol energy of s1t it's plus the symbol energy of s2t minus something called um, uh, uh, minus 2 times rho 1, 2. And what's rho 1, 2? Rho 1, 2, as we see below there, is some sort of correlation. How much of S1 and S2 have in common with each other? And the way we calculate that is we multiply S1 of t with S2 of t and integrate over the period to give us this value. And what happens is when we look at this expression, what we want to do, because we want to make uh, epsilon p, the power efficiency, as large as possible, and um, what we want to do is we want to maximize the Euclidean distance. We want to make the waveforms as different as possible, but we w and we want to keep the uh, uh, symbol energy as small as possible, right? And it might be difficult to achieve both, but what's one way of making uh, epsilon p as big as possible? We make d min squared as large as possible. How do you make d min squared as large as possible based on expression 10? Well, ES1 and ES2 are positive values, so what we need to do is make rho 1, 2 as, uh, as negative as possible, right? And so what we want to do is we essentially want to make um, uh, uh, S1 and S2 as, as uh, polar opposites as possible because then there are correlation, there will be as, they'll have a correlation of like in the, in, in, that will be negative, will be totally opposite to each other. So let's go through an example. And so um, uh, let, let's look at, uh, uh, again, a binary phase shift keying modulation scheme that um, we have two examples here. S1 of t in the first case, uh, we have um, a representation of one as a cosine omega ct plus theta. And S2 is just zero, okay? Which is legit. It's a legitimate uh, a BPSK representation. It turns out, if you do the math, that this actually is equal to a power efficiency of two, which is awful. We basically decrease our power efficiency by, fa uh, by half. That's a three dB loss. That's a disaster. On the other hand, let's look at the second um, representation here, the S1 of t and S2 of t. One's a sine and one's a cosine. So they're 90 degrees out of phase. And alas, we get the same power efficiency issue. It's epsilon p is equal to two. So the same 3 dB loss relative to an epsilon p of 4. So let's look at this graphically again, like the, the three types of BPSK representations that we have. Okay, so um, what we need to do is we need to see, okay, visually what this is all mean before we do any of the math. And so uh, we saw before our first example of BPSK looks something like this. Um, S1 of t, which represents a 1, is a cosine omega c t plus theta, and S2 of t is equal to a cosine omega c t plus theta plus pi. We also saw here in the example, S1 of t, S2 of t, and S1 of t, and S2 of t 
and we have a cosine omega ct plus theta and zero and a omega ct plus theta and a sine omega ct plus theta. So how does this graphically look like? So we talk about Euclidean distance. So in the first case, so we what we'll look at later on in this course is something called signal constellations. And we have an in phase and quadrature. So this is for two dimensional signal representations. Um, S1 and S2 for the, case, the first case will look something like this. Where they're totally opposite to each other, right? And they're offset from the x axis, the in phase axis, by theta. And then pi rotation around the uh, uh, IQ plane um, to show that they're polar opposites. So that's case one. For case two, what we have is something that looks like this we have S1 of t and then S2 of t is at the origin. Not so far apart, right? So that we will assume it will not be as power efficient because the Euclidean distance, the physical distance between these two points, these two signal constellation points here, is much closer together than these two guys. Now let's look at case three. Because sine and cosine are 90 degrees out of phase, what we'll have is, we'll have something that looks like this, a theta, and then we'll have one guy that is 90 degrees out of phase or 90 degrees phase rotated from S1. And although it's farther away, the, 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 the two signal constellation points, S1 from S2 relative to the case two, they're still not as far apart as in the case of case one. And so from this, uh, we can then do our calculations. Remember the three step process, or uh, four steps actually, so one, is calculate d min. And that is equal to integrating over the period the difference of the two waveforms. Then step two, calculate the average symbol energy. So first of all, we find out what the individual symbol energy is. And then from that, calculate the average bit energy so the probability of a zero um, um, times the probability that that, uh, 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 that, that a zero was uh, transmitted, uh, energy that uh, was transmitted plus the probability that one was transmitted and the energy that a one was transmitted, and then apply your expression. D min squared divided by EB bar. And that, folks, will give you the power efficiency for your BPSK modulation.